This satellite essentially went dead for communications and control very shortly after it attained orbit. Specifically, there was enough of a risk for the president to be quite concerned about human life. And on that basis, uh, he asked us to review our options. It's the hydrazine here that is the distinguishing characteristic. So in brief, the tank will survive, it will be breached, the hydrazine will reach the ground, and that's not an outcome we want to see. Had we not had the infrastructure and the processes that, were, that Aegis was built on, had we not had the team here inside Lockheed, had we not had CSET and the sailors and the people there, had we not had the analysts at APL, Dahlgren, and the engineers for the standard missile out of Raytheon, had we not had ATRC and the ability to pull together a training package, uh, had we not had that infrastructure, it would not have been possible. The ability for the engineers here to go to CSET, work the changes with the sailors mashing buttons with the engineers, if we had not been able to do that, characterize the target, uh, we could not have succeeded. We just got done with uh, Flight Test Mission 13 and Japanese Flight Test Mission 1, and so I've got a very good cadre of watch standards that can go execute something like this, and so it was a matter of modifying our procedures. It was, I think, quite amazing. The team that came together across the board uh, was able to do it so quickly in such a short amount of time. I don't know if there's another nation. I don't know if there's another Navy. I don't know if there's another industry government team that could have done what was just done in six weeks. All stations attached, set space warning red, weapons tight. Step 44 complete. All stations tax, state victory of valid time, 03305000. This is green. Battle short enabled, step 48 complete. I'm showing launch enabled. Cap tax, state vector valid, track 5001. Kill track 5001, batteries release, SM3. Killing 5001, Eagle. Good predicted intercept flying. GPS 20 seconds. Back eye. Launch at 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1. Eagle away. Track 5001. Eagle track 8003. Time to intercept 166 seconds. Third stage, pulse one. Pulse one. Third stage, code. Local track. Fireball track 80040. Fireball. Track valid. Engage the quality. Associating 80004. Now attack 80036. Third stage, pulse two. Pulse two. Pulse two. Third stage count. It's working. It's working. I think the success means a couple different things. On the level of the tactical perspective, that existing Aegis technology and SM3, standard missile technology in general, but specifically SM3 technology, just like we did to get from air warfare to Genesis ballistic missile defense, we leveraged off the existing Aegis and standard missile technology. We've now taken that leveraging one step farther. 
and use what we were doing for a ballistic missile defense to potentially do something uh, at a much higher speed and a much higher atmosphere. And again, I think that's going to be something that we can use in the longer range, more complex threat in the ballistic missile defense uh, area. As I said, I couldn't be more proud of the crew. Just am so thankful that the government industry team that was formed to do this is uh, um, as dedicated and professional uh, as they are. And uh, we were fortunate to be able to go do it and have it come off successfully. I wanted to come up and say thank you for what you did and what your contributions were and your dedication to make this the historic event it is. Again, I, I haven't quite figured it all out myself about the historic nature of this, but it truly will be a significant day, not just in the Navy's history, not just in Aegis's history, but in the nation's history.